Okay, so today we're going to talk about an algorithm called counting sort. And this is going to be pretty straightforward, pretty simple, nothing too difficult. We're going to look at how counting sort works. We're going to analyze counting sorts exact, exact number of operations. And we're going to, yeah, that's all we're going to do. So first of all, if you have not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel, like the video. I always say this, but just getting that out there. So what is counting sort? Counting sort is a special sorting algorithm um, that runs in linear time with respect to two variables, k and n. We're going to see why that's the case. Um, but the reason counting sort is interesting is because it's a special kind of sorting algorithm. It's a sorting algorithm where we know something about the input. Remember all the other ones we've covered? We've covered merge sort, we've covered quick sort, we've covered heap sort, we've covered insertion sort, selection sort, bubble sort. All of these algorithms, we did not know anything about the input. They could have been objects, they could have been integers, they could have been strings, they could have been primitives, like, or floats, well, integers are primitives. They could have been anything. But here we know that our input are all positive integers. And that's special. We're going to see why that is the, why it has to be that way. Um, because for counting sort, we're going to be counting occurrences. It's straightforward. We're going to have an array. We're going to count the occurrences of each one of the values occurring. And then in our output, we're going to just place that amount of occurrences into the final array in sequence. The only confusing part of this is that last step placement. Everything else is super simple. You've probably seen the patterns before. And what we're going to do is at the end of this, we're going to generalize this to mapping anything to an integer. If I can map anything to a positive integer, I can do counting sort to it. And okay, we'll, we'll get to that. Let's not get too far ahead, but let's do an example and see how counting sort works on positive integers, which is what we're going to do. An array and K. So that's all we need to sort this data. We need the array and then we need K. So what does K mean? Well, we could name it anything. It doesn't have to be K, but K is just the amount of unique values. How many unique values do I need to track in my array going from zero to the max element? What is the largest element in that array? Look right there. The largest element is four. I need to track zero, one, two, three, four. How many elements is that? That's five elements. K is five. So we could do this. If we didn't get K, yeah, we could do a linear time pass and get it. But if we just get K, we, we assume we're getting K, right? And we don't need to find the max element and do all of that stuff. We know what the range of values is. We're given K. So what we need to do is make it an array size K with five positions to track the occurrences of the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's put, a, put that right there. We have a count array. How many positions do we have? K positions, five positions, and we initialize the counts to zero. Okay, so now what we do is the counting part. We are going to count how many occurrences there are of each element, and we do this in linear time. We start at the four, we have one four. Next, we move to the three, we have one three. We're just doing increments. I'm not saying there's one three. I'm saying increment the amount of occurrences at three, which we do zero plus one is one. So we put a one at the position three. And then we see a one, now we add an occurrence for that. And then we see a two, add an occurrence for that. And then we see a zero, add occurrence for that. So that's it. What we just did was we made our count array. And apparently each one of these items occurred once. Remember we're tracking zero through four. This array holds all the elements from zero to k minus one. k is five, the last index is four, right? and five total items, which is K. So what we need to do now is we got our array, we got our counts, now we need to make a running sum of the counts. And you'll see what I mean. What we're going to do is we're going to iterate from index one to the final index, and we're going to get the running sum. And what does this running sum represent? So it represents at this position, say I'm at two, the value held at position two is going to say there are this many elements less than or equal to me. 
So this is confusing. Let's get the running sum right now. So start at position one. The position here is what is the value here plus the value behind me. So one plus one is two. Now we're at index two. The position I'm at, the value I'm at, which is one, plus the value behind me, which is two. So now I put three. So next we're at index three. So the value for index three should be what I'm holding, my current position, I have the value one, plus everything before me, which is three. So one plus three is four. And then finally we do one, which is the value at the fourth position, plus everything before it, four, one plus four is five. So we just took the running sums. So take three for example, index three has the value of four. What that's saying is there are four occurrences of values less than or equal to three. Are there four occurrences? We see that's true. We have a three, a one, a two, and a zero. Let's say we have index two, value at index two is three. There are three numbers less than or equal to two. So let's look and we see, yes, that's true. Two, one, and zero. Three numbers less than or equal to two. So why, why did we do this? And I, I really wanna give you the deeper understanding behind why we just did that, because it, it plays a role in placements. And what I want you to think of this as is the value that you see there, for each of those numbers, this is gonna be hard to grasp until we do the placement step, which is next. Each of those numbers at those positions in that array, these indexes, each of those represent the last position that that item can occur in the output array. So this will make a lot more sense if you look at the code and the way placements are done for this algorithm, but the last position, let's take an example. The last position that a four can occur is going to be the value at four, which is five minus one, index four. That is the last position that four can occur. So let's look at two. The value at two is three. Three minus one is two. The last index that two can occur is index two. So, okay, this is difficult to convey. Let's do the placements and you'll see exactly what I mean. This is, this is the trickiest part of this. Everything else was really simple. Three for loops so far. Now let's do the final for loop. So what we do is we need an array for placements. So let's put that here. Okay, so what we do is we work backwards in the original array right there. That original array, we start with the last item. Let's put a pointer right there. So start with the last item, zero. So we see, go to the occurrence mapping. What is the last possible index that zero can occur? It's going to be one minus this value here. So the reason we do one minus, minus by one is because we need to re-index back to zero. Because in programming arrays, or you know we index by zero. And this is indexing by one if we go by the occurrences, right? So the last index zero can occur at is going to be one minus one, and that's index zero. So we place the zero at index zero, and we decrement the value in the count array at that position. That is one placement finished. Now we move our cursor back. Now we need to place the two. Go to the count array. The last index that two can occur is three minus one, two. Index two is the last index two can occur. So we're going to place it there. And then we decrement the value at that occurrence mapping. And then move the pointer again. So now we're at one. Go to the occurrence mapping. The last index one can occur at is two minus one, which is one. So put a one at index one. And then decrement the count at one. Move the pointer back to three. Three, go to the occurrence mapping. Last index three can occur is the value at index three in the count, which is four. Four minus one is three. Put the value three at index three. And then decrement the count in the mapping. Move back to the final item, the four, or the first item. Four in the count array 
has a value of 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. 4, the last index 4 can go, is going to be index 4. So place it there. And now what we want to do is decrement the counts in the count array for that. And there we go. We have a sorted array. So this is weird. The weirdest part is why did we do that aggregation on the count? Why did we do that? The reason we did it is because that indicates to us the final position, the final index that that element can ever go. And when I'm saying, when I'm going back to my array and I say, where does zero go? I reference here to nowhere zero goes, right? And by the very nature of keeping cumulative occurrences, we make sure no value encroaches on the other because the cumulative occurrence will always respect the number next to it because they're going to stay in their separate little zones, right? Each of these numbers has its own little zoning. And I, I mean, this is kind of the best way I can explain it. I think the best way to learn this is look at the code um, and read it through. It's really just four for loops. But the only confusing part is why don't we just place stuff in order? Why even do the aggregation? But this way is, is the traditional way that it's done and you'll see it most commonly. And you could just place it from the original count array and just do it that way. Or you could do it this way. So what we need to see is how, um, oh. what we need to see is how efficient was this? So I would look at the code to see the bounds of these summations I'm about to draw, but it's fairly simple, straightforward. We're just doing summation simplifying to see why it is the linear runtime we get. So why don't we analyze what we just did right now? Okay, so there are four for loops in the version that we're analyzing right now. The both versions, the other versions that we would look at. Hey, what's up? Is there like a meeting in here? Oh, no, it's not. So again, for this, I would reference the code in the description, but I'm going to just write the summations and it's a fairly simple simplification that we're gonna do. So for the for, first for loop, we create the array and initialize everything to zero. So we go from index zero to index k minus one. This is initializing the counts. So the step you see right there is the first step. That is the um, initialization to zero. So we can write init zero right there. So that's the first summation. So what is the second summation? So the next summation is where we go through every single position in the, um, in the original array. So that's going to go from zero to array.length minus one, which is n minus one. So let's write that right now. So that summation is to go through the original array and populate the count array with the occurrences. And then our next step is the aggregation. We take our counts and we sum it going, doing a running sum through the array going that way. So that summation goes from, again, zero to k minus one, since we're iterating against the count array. So this is the aggregate step. And now we're at the final step, which is placements. Placements is where we go through the original array from back to front. Um, and what we're doing is we're gonna do work equivalent to going from front to back, which is index zero to index n minus one, array.length minus one. So let's do that summation. This is the placement step. And I forgot those are not i's, those are ones because we are doing constant work in each iteration. So those should be ones, not i's, my bad. They look similar and I kinda wasn't thinking there. But now we have all those summations. Oh, forgot a one. And what we're gonna do is simplify them. So here's what happens. The way you simplify a sum with just parameterized by a one is you subtract the top bound minus the lower bound and then add one. So that's giving us the total amount of loops happening. So let's do that for each one of these. So then when we sum all of those, we get top bound minus lower bound plus one. This is barely even readable. So we literally could just do the original thing in our head. And what it becomes is actually this. So the work that we're doing in this for loop is K work. The work we're doing in this for loop, N work, K work, N work. The initializing everything to zero, the getting the occurrences of all the or all the numbers, the aggregate step where we go through the count array, which is length k, and the final step, which is placement, which we do n. We have to touch all n items. And what this simplifies to is this. 
2n plus 2k, factor out the 2, we get 2n plus k. And since this whole expression thing is parameterized by n and k, n and k are the, draw st or the strings we have to manipulate this, we can bound to those. We bound to um, big O of n plus k. This is the worst work we can do. And this is actually the worst. Um, this is the upper bound, the um, exact bound, and the lower bound, because it really doesn't matter what the input is. We'll always create the same size array, which is going to be length k. We're going to, for, for the count, we're going to do the same process, no matter what the input is. So we actually can exact bound this to n plus k. So that is basically it for counting sort. We have four for loops doing all those steps, and that's it. n plus k. Uh, we did theta because we can exactly bound it. So that is basically it. I don't know what else I could say about this. There's probably questions you still have in your mind because I don't know if this was the most uh, clean explanation slash video thing, but I think you can get it if you look at the code and just deeply think about what's really happening. So that is all for this video. This was kind of, uh, kind of a break off from what I normally do. I mean, I've constantly been doing these algorithms videos, but it's kind of in line because I'm in algorithms class right now and I kind of just do these videos because teaching allows you to learn it better. And because if you teach it, you definitely need to know what you're talking about. Um, but I want to get back to the traditional like interview questions. Um, I think I, I, I've done a good amount of videos of those two, but I'm going to do more of those moving forward. Um, I mean, this is a project that's going to probably go one or two more years um, until it like becomes non-sustainable. Um, and if it does become sustainable, then it's something I might continue. But that is basically it for this video. Um, yeah, like, uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, go interview, get a good job and be happy. That's what it's all about.